Now I'm going to move into um, the group by group subject specific advice because the IB is um, one of those ones where you have to learn how to pick from your baskets. Which cherry are you going to pick from which of the six baskets? So group one is studies in language and literature. And a lot of people have struggles choosing which language that they should choose. But I have seen like a lot of international students struggle because like they speak Lithuanian at home but then they speak English at school and they're not sure like do I do Lithuanian HL or English HL. Um, my opinion is that you just pick the language at which you are best at writing at. I can speak Indonesian pretty well but I can't write it at all and that's kind of the most important skill. So your language and literature should be in the language in which you can both easily read and write. I know a lot of Korean students who English literature rather than Korean literature because whilst they could speak Korean at home and stuff they were much more fluent in English because that is what they had been doing at school. But then here comes the big question of whether you should pick Langlet or literature. So most schools you will either have the option of picking languages in literature or you will have the option of doing just pure literature. And what I find the difference is, is that one, language and literature is generally perceived as easier. It doesn't mean it's easy to guys seven, it just means it's slightly easier than literature. And how I think they're different is, I did literature, so I'm not exactly sure on how the language and literature works, is that language and literature is about all kinds of written text types. So that can include books, um, speeches, articles, blog posts, and more and websites and that kind of stuff whilst literature is purely um, novel based so it's like books plays dramas and those kind of stuff so which one do you pick language and literature or literature how I would differentiate the two is that it's really for people who like to read so it's for readers and people who've read a lot of books as a child and stuff language and literature is more like you read blog posts you read like articles you read stories you still do literature but you also have to do like just more normal sort of text types that are more easier to read i would also like to point out that um between english literature hl and standard level they are basically the same the only main difference was that hl had to do like an extra book like keep it standard level and then if you you feel that one of your hls is like becoming more weak you can pick up english hl quite easily you're gonna have to talk to your teacher about this at least but like for our group yeah like hl only had to like read one more book for their ioc which really didn't count for much the main difference between english is that there's just a much higher level like it's really really hard to get a six and higher english high level but it's like pretty reasonable and like you can pretty reasonably get a five or a six if you work hard it's just hard to get that seven also in english literature standard level it's quite easy to get that seven for english literature higher level yeah you really have to be really really good at writing in order to do uh well so yeah Okay, so something's come up, so we've had to move locations to a less optimal area. But anyways, I'm going to still continue on with this video. Now, in terms of group two language acquisition, as by the title language acquisition, um, this subject is not so much about analyzing literature and trying to interpret writing like how language one is. Language acquisition is all about like developing your communication skills, developing your writing skills, developing like your like vocabulary and stuff like that so the test is not so much like oh what does this mean it's more like oh um uh who said this or like or whatever like more like straightforward like comprehension style question like uh, so there's two levels when it comes to language acquisition there's ab initio and then there's me ab initio is for complete beginners it's for people who have never um learned that language before who have never done it before and and there's not much expected of you from that from the ab initio course b is kind of like you already kind of know the language so a lot of people in my school do Indonesian literature and then English B because they're Indonesian but they've studied English at school so they do English B. For the most, um, English B is a really good subject to take if you go to an English spe speaking school because uh, it's kind of it's kind of an easy seven for a lot of people. Like people seem to get, like just churn out sixes and sevens in that course because they speak English outside of the class, but that so and and inside of the class and what I've also heard from a lot of people is that if you're gonna do B, then you should probably take HL because apparently SL just has like really 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 high boundaries to get to seven wash whilst HL doesn't so SL will SL you can only miss one mark in some of them and you just need really really high marks to get that seven whilst um, HL like it's not that high to get a seven for anyone that wants to know I kind of cheated the system I actually took 
Indonesian Ebenezio. Even though I can already speak Indonesian, it's just that like, but I think that was kind of right for me because um, my Indo is so bad, like it's so bad. So Indonesian Ebenezio is actually kind of the right level for me. I actually took like lessons throughout the year in order to improve my Indonesian because it was just so terrible. But when it came to the exam, the exam was so, so easy. I finished so early because I would already know how to speak the language. What a lot of people are confronted with is that they're not sure if they should pick a B language that they're already familiar with or they should like start afresh with a new Ebenezio language. So for example, some kids were not sure if they wanted to do Indo B because they were Indo students and they could already speak Indo or if they should do Spanish Ebenezio and learn a new language. Now, it depends on what you want. So, um, how I see it is that like, okay, if you want to learn a new language, then it's su too super valuable to take the Ebenezio subject in order to like pick up a language. But if you want to do that, that generally takes a lot more effort and work than going with the B subject that you are already pretty familiar with. A lot of Indo students um, in my grade actually took Spanish and Benicio, but then dropped to Indo B because they found that learning a language was like taking up too much of their time. So if you're a language student, then yeah, like take a new language. But what I find is that like this, this is the kind of group that most people forget about and most people like kind of put to the side during the IB diploma program. You kind of concentrate on the other five for this one. Like it's, yeah, it's really interesting to learn a new language, but when you have like five other subjects that are really hardcore and dense and you have the option to just take the easy route here. I just took the easy route and I took Ebenezio and I didn't have to study that much. Um, decide what works for you, but yeah. Group three, individuals and societies. So this is your humanities essay writing subject. I personally took history higher level. Some of the other subjects that come in here are ITGS, psychology, sociology, business and economic. What binds these all together is that they are all super, super content heavy. And then the style of exam is like essay style, like short answer style. Based off like what I've heard, uh, ITGS seems to be like that subject where people don't study much for but somehow seem to get high marks. That's just from hearing people. I'm sure it's not easy, no IB subject easy, but history higher level is super, super hard. Echo is really hard, psych is really hard, but then no one really complains about ITGS being super, super hard, you know what I mean? I think this is definitely the subject in which you really want to check the syllabus for. What makes these subjects hard is that they are super incredibly content heavy. There's a lot you need to learn, memorize, and understand. And if you don't like, like what the teacher is teaching, it's gonna be a struggle for you. So, school offers history, check which histories you guys are learning. Maybe you really like ancient history, but the teacher is teaching only modern history. In history, the IB history system, there's so many different options that your teachers could choose from. Check what history uh, courses your teachers teach you and see if you're interested in them. And for other subjects like uh, Echo and Psych and um, ITGS, you wanna like really read up on these subjects, learn what they're about, learn what the style of the subject is because there's a lot of content that you have to learn for these subjects and it's good to be familiar with what you're getting yourself into. Looking back, I think I made a mistake. I really, really wanted to take economics but somehow ended up taking history. I thought it would be an easier way to get a mark in the subject because I thought it was really hard. But now looking back, yeah, it probably is gonna be easier for me to get a mark in history, a higher mark in history, but like it has been such a drain to get me to study that subject because there's just so much content and I really like economics. So even though it would've been harder, I may have done like just as well because I really enjoyed the content. Also for a rather good history, if you have a bad teacher, history is gonna be a really, really hard subject for you because there's literally Zelch resources out there. Like it's so hard to find resources for history, especially if you're doing a niche history topic that no one's done before. There's quite a bit on like Hitler and Mao and stuff, but there's nothing like super, super good. Like I'm pretty sure economics has a lot of really good resources and videos out there, but history is just like so hard to find resources. Now for group four, the experimental sciences my particular area of expertise because I did physics higher level and chemistry higher level. I'm not trying to brag, I'm here to warn you. Okay, so in general, you basically have four options. You can either do physics, biology, chemistry, or ESS. and you have to do one of these. In general, um, if you don't really care about science, I know this is a stereotype, but ESS is stereotyped to be like the easy one. No science courses out there will take ESS, and so ESS is like not for science students, if you're wondering. No shame, no shame, but like ESS is generally perceived to be the easier science. In terms of the big three, physics, biology, and chemistry, this is how a teacher put it for me. 
do physics if you like math, do bio if you like English and words, do chemistry if you want to be a scientist. Let's flesh out this idea a bit more. So if you like math, do physics. Because basically all you do in physics IB is that you learn concepts, you learn how to model those concepts with equations, you have to learn how to manipulate and use those equations. It's kind of like conceptual algebra, but a lot of it is just like learning how to use equations, learning how to read and interpret graphs, learning definitions and formulas. There's not much you have to memorize in physics because you do get a data booklet and you can kind of just infer from the um, equations what to do. But yeah, if you don't like math and you hate looking at graphs and stuff, then don't do physics. I particularly like physics. I thought it was a great subject. I thought it was so fun. Even though there is math in it, the math isn't hard. The math isn't like calculus stuff. It's like being able to add, subtract, and do algebra correctly, which is pretty simple math. Bio is a lot more of a memory game. So there's a lot of stuff to memorize. You have to go over your keywords. You have to know mechanisms. You have to know how to draw diagrams. And so they say that bio is for people who like English, basically. Chemistry, on the other hand, I did chemistry and I completely agree with this advice. Chemistry is for people who want to become scientists because chemistry is all about being able to take all these tricks that scientists learn and learn how to apply them to experiments in real life. Learning about your lab skills and how to like do experiments in chemistry is really important because they're kind of complicated. Being able to make predictions based off logic is really important in chem. In terms of math and memorizing, chemistry is kind of like in the middle. There's not so much that you have to memorize per se, but there is some stuff you have to memorize. So chemistry, there's like some maths and some memory and that kind of combines into just being like really really a logic based subject. To recap, if you like math and equations and graphs, do physics, if you like words and memorizing context, do bio. If you want to be a scientist, if you want to be a doctor, if you like science in general, yeah, chemistry is good. If you don't like any of those things, just pick one, it doesn't really matter. Now, moving on to group five, maths is hard because the new syllabus is changing. I personally took Math SL, but that's literally gonna help no people at this moment. I'm gonna link to a really good Revision Village article in which it breaks down the new syllabus in a really nice way, but I'm just gonna go <coughs> Okay, so in the new math syllabus, there's two types of maths that you can take. You can take applications and interpretations and analysis and approaches. So based off this article, applications and interpretations SL is for students who are not strong in maths and do not plan to study maths based courses after high school. This is for people who would have taken math studies, I guess. Then applications and interpretations HL is students who are strong at maths, enjoy the subject, but do not plan to study maths based courses after high school. I guess this is for people who like the SL course and wanted like a bit more push and a bit more depth in it, but didn't want to do HL. I, I think this is the course that I would have taken because I liked SL, I put so much effort into it, like I thought it might as well be a HL. Then analysis and approaches. So this is for students who are moderate in maths and interested in studying courses involving maths after high schools. So this is probably for students who want to study sciences and economics, but they're not super, super amazing at it. They're more good at their science and economic subjects than they are in math. And then analysis and approaches HL is basically similar to the current math HL and this is for the strongest students at math and who are interested in courses which are heavily reliant on math after high school. So for, if you want to go into math and engineering you should probably take this course. I don't really know much about it. I didn't do any of these courses. Um, I just did the math SL HL whatever course and yeah so make a decision. Ask your teacher and check your, check your university see which maths they want. And finally, in terms of art subjects, I am completely useless because I didn't do any art subjects. But based on my own experience, if you have the opportunity and you don't need to take another subject, really, really consider taking an art subject. I really wish I could have taken Film HL and I really regret not taking Film HL. I really wanted to study sciences in university and unfortunately I really, really needed to have another science so I had to take chemistry instead of film. Now, in terms of when it's too late to switch, I think term one is kind of your flexible time. So term one, you should be trying out all of your classes, seeing what you like, seeing what you don't like. I would recommend personally keeping all of your harder subjects at HL, which will then allow you to drop to SL if they become too hard. So for example, um, I'd recommend not starting off with English HL, but start off with one of the higher ones at HL because English HL, really easy, at least in my school, to just pick up again because it's not much coursework, you just like get a higher expectation. So if you have English as a standard level, that kind of gives you a safety net for if one of your HL starts dropping, you can just pick up English HL. It's not easy, I'm not saying it's easy, but it is one that like some people just pick up like a month before the exams and then they're fine. So it really depends on the subject and stuff. Um, if you can switch, do it because you'll thank yourself later on. 
and you'll learn a lot from being forced to catch up with all that information and work. Yeah, one of my friends switched in like week three of term two and it, she switched from chemistry to business management and she, she did fine, she was okay, so yeah, it's fine. So yeah, between term one and term two, this is the key switching period. After that, that's gonna be a lot harder, but you can still do it, I've seen people do it, but it's just hard for them to catch up. Okay, now, what happens if you um, are one year into the IB and you hate your subjects and you want to change all of them? <laughs> now, this was kind of me at some point. Like, lots of people, like, halfway through the course, they're like, Oh my god, why didn't I take economics? Oh my god, why didn't I take math HL or whatever? But one I want to acknowledge is that no one's subject choices are ever perfect. At the end of the IB, everyone wish wishes they had done different things. But if they had done different things, would they really have been better off? Like for me, right? For the entire time during like the last six months of history, I just complained that I wish I had done economics. But if I had done economics, maybe I would have found it really difficult. I don't know. I can't really know. So just kind of accept that your subject choices may not be perfect. You may be doing subjects that you really, really hate. But you can kind of look at the bigger picture here. It's only two years of your life. And after that, you won't have to study those subjects anymore. Yeah, so for me, I wish I'd done like economics, SL, and then math HL, rather than history HL and math SL. But did that really, really affect my IB experience? I mean, it kind of did. At the end of the day, not really. Like, I still had a good experience. History is still a super valuable subject to learn. I really liked math SL. And so, yeah, it's okay to have some subjects that you don't like, that you hate. Everyone has that subject that they just can't stand. Even if I did do Echo and Math HL, those subjects probably would have also brought me so much problems because economics, um, the teacher switched halfway through the year, it's kind of a disaster. Um, math HL is just super, super hard. And yeah, so it's always look screen on the other side, kids. So don't worry about your subject choices. And that's all for this video. Don't take all of my advice like super, super seriously. Just take it as a perspective from a post IB student. Do your own research, talk to your parents, talk to your teachers, talk to your friends. Try and figure it out for yourself and decide what you really want to do. Just remember that you can always switch, you can always change. People do it, it's fine. It's pretty normal actually. It's all about figuring out what works for you and yeah if you want post your queries in the comments i'll try and answer them and yeah um hope you have a good day and see ya